Welcome everyone back to Asturias City in City Skylines. Today we are going to start building a project that is always my favorite and that is a custom bridge. But this one will be a bit special. It will be the longest bridge in the whole city and it will also combine many different networks. We are moving further in the direction of the previous project, so towards the second river that is going into the bay with the space elevator along the coastline. On the mountain near it, we built the residential district with buildings inside the slopes and today the bridge area will continue that closer to the river, so let's go build it. This first thing that I'm going to build here is the main structure of the bridge itself and just after doing this one simple thing, uh, we might call it done because after that it's just gonna be a whole bunch of smaller details, but this one huge structure, the huge detail, is going to be very important and this is something that I wanted to do right from the start, right from the beginning when I placed these railway networks over this river, this mouth of the river here, because we have the mountains on both sides and the river is kind of in a deep valley, so it was clear that there is some potential to play with that terrain and create something slightly unusual. And that is exactly this. So I wanted to create a suspension bridge, but instead of creating the pillars on the sides of the river, on the sides of the bridge, we are just going to have the cable go from the mountain tops and the bridge is just going to be hanging from that. So there are not going to be any like huge pylons, but there are just going to be this uh, concrete blocks on the, on the mountain sides like this that are going underground, obviously, heavily or deep, and that are anchoring the cable. The cable is obviously going to be absolutely massive. I'm not really sure what the length of the cable is at this point, but uh, it is very, very long. It's like at least twice as long as the previous bridges that we did. The, the bridge itself is obviously a bit shorter, but uh, I just really felt that I wanted to do this, uh, this kind of structure in here. So uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much done and uh, you know, that's the bridge. Now all we need to do is just make sure that the cable is somehow attached to the networks and we have to also make the networks. So this is, uh, this is kind of an important moment as well because uh, these are going to be the highways that I'm going to be using in Asturias. I believe that these are called the Hang Gang uh, highways in the workshop. They're looking very similar to Shuto highways, but they're not because they have the unified or like the flat asphalt texture on them, which is very important for, for example, node controller changes, intersection marking tools and all that. Uh, that was like a major headache in Aurelia back in the day because the Shuto expressways, uh, they had like flat nodes but this kind of like a weathered look on the segments and it was really visible the transition between those so all these kinds of uh, you know exits and entrances to the highways intersections basically were not looking all that great but with these particular highways this should be much better because the textures are unified over segments and nodes so these are going to be the highways that i will be using in asturias i'll probably link them in the video or description if you are interested in using them as well so yeah, that's uh, that's that. By the way, they have very nice looking tunnel entrances, as you can see here. Although the tunnel entrances are a bit smaller, I had to widen them, widen them with uh, node controllers so that they match the bridge type. But anyway, let's not talk about the highways anymore. Let's talk about the rest of the networks, mostly the railways, because that's going to be very important. And by the way, I should probably mention, uh, it's probably not apparent right now, but uh, the bridge is going to be on multiple levels. The networks will be on multiple levels. We have already done that in the city previously. We have done that first custom bridge, which has the roads on the bottom and the trains on the top. So it only has two levels. This one is going to have three. That's right. Now, at first I wanted to have it so that I already prepared those railway networks like that on the slopes so that the cargo railway is going to be the one in the middle. The bottom railway just continues along the coastline that is not going to go on the bridge. And this top one is a passenger railway again that is just going to stay on this level but it will be offset like this and just continue over the bridge. And the plan was right now to perhaps... Uh, put like a tram track under this upper passenger railway on the side of that cargo railway below all that put the highways and uh, somewhere just place some kind of like a pedestrian entrance into that entire uh, bridge uh, bridge structure right but that kind of proved to be a bit um, impossible then to connect the pedestrian path uh, somewhere into the city because 
uh, this explanation is probably going to get very complicated, but you you will all see that. So I'm just going to you know go ahead and say it anyway. But that bottom railway right here on these slopes, like I said, that's continuing on the coastline, and there's going to be a train station very close to the start of that bridge. And I really wanted to have it so that any kind of pedestrian path is going to go to that train station, so that people can just you know get off the train if they are like going into the city, not exactly from the downtown. That's kind of pointless. But if they are going into the city, they can just get off and just go uh, on foot over the bridge or board the tram and use that. So I really wanted to have the trams and the pedestrian pathways go into the same direction from the bridge, right? Because the start of the bridge is basically this like a T shape, right? So there is the bridge that is going perpendicular to the coastline. And on the coastline, we have all these networks that are going parallel to the coastline. So perpendicular to the bridge It's going to be all super visible once this place is done, right? This is the railway that I'm talking about. That's just going to continue on the coastline. And there is going to be some kind of a a train station with a transfer to this tram track that I'm building right here. This is exactly the same line that is coming from the uh, slopes area from last time. So it's kind of circling down in that underground, uh, like a semi loop. And uh, just to gain the elevation, or in this case, just drop down to the elevation of the bridge from the slopes and continue over the river. So this was like my first attempt to stack all these networks on top of each other and make it work. But it was apparent that that's not really going to work otherwise or unless I did it on four levels and basically made probably the pedestrian path just go just jump over the railways. So that would not work. So I finally decided that uh, we are not going to have the railways on different levels, but we are going to put them on the same level. And uh, that is kind of justifiable still, even though I did not do it like that on the slopes as I was building right there, because the pedestrian, uh, uh, sorry, the, the passenger railway needs to go over the cargo railway from the downtown station. That is uh, that is basically done uh, like directly after that, uh, that, that terminus, or not terminal, but the terminal, like the huge uh, hub uh, station from two episodes back. Yeah, so it still needs to go over the cargo railway anyway. But uh, it coming back down to the same level as the cargo railway is, uh, is not really that big of a problem. It actually kind of makes sense. So anyway, just to summarize this, uh, the bridge is made so that on the bottom there is the highway, both directions. Then on the middle level, there are both of the railways uh, from this view right now. The right one is the cargo, the left one is the passenger. And on the top, we are going to have the we are going to have the pedestrian path, this one on the right and on the left, the tram tracks. That's the line that comes from those slopes area. Uh, there we go. Finally explained that. Hopefully it's going to be visible from the video a bit more. But as you can see, the bridge is really complicated with all these kinds of networks. So so yeah, and that was the point, obviously, you no know, more complicated, the better as with pretty much everything in Asturias. Now we must start detailing some kind of structure. And I was not sure about this at all. So at first, I tried to create some kind of like a box shape around the all the networks basically, and uh, make them just suspended below the cable. But then I realized that's kind of what we did with that first bridge, right? So in here, I wanted to go for something slightly slimmer, lighter, maybe. And uh, eventually, I decided that I'm just going to do these beams, these like uh, sticking beams, it's going to look like a hedgehog kind of. And uh, they are just going to stick from the sides like that. And they are going to be the beams uh, holding the, the levels, right? So there are going to be three floors, three levels. And uh, in here, by the way, I'm just uh, trying to evenly space them on the bridge. What I'm doing in here is I'm basically just creating layers or I have one layer with procedural objects and I'm always hiding everything that is already done so that uh, yeah, with this last layer that I'm doing right here, for example, I just randomly copied those uh, beams in place, but they are not even what I'm doing, what I'm doing going to do is I'm just going to hide those top two. And then the bottom one, I'm going to select with move it and hit control A, which is my shortcut for the alignment, right? Yeah, for the even spaced alignment. So that's how I'm doing it. That's just very easy to do it that way. And that's by the way, how I did it also for the vertical alignment so that the middle beam is actually in the center between the top and the bottom. 
And also the middle beams, as you can see, they are wider so that it's uh, like widest in the middle and uh, then just like slimmer on the top and the bottom. It's just like a aesthetical uh, thing. Now in here, I was experimenting with some different, with different things. As you can see, I created this like a circular box on the edges of the, on the ends of the bridge, but that's not going to stay. So I don't even, I didn't even show how I built that because I'm just going to get rid of it. I also tried using a color gradient for those beams on the bridge, but eventually I was not really satisfied with the colors. I could not really figure out the pattern that I would like to do there. So I just, uh, you know, when I'm done, I'm just going to turn them into, into the default white. And it was looking the best, honestly. And it's actually going to, uh, it's actually going to work much, much better, work the best with uh, what I'm going to do later on uh, on the on the coastline in here. All right, so that's not going to stay. Those are those are just some experiments, but they are visible in the time lapse, so I felt like I should uh, explain that. Anyway, this is the most important part uh, part of this entire project because the bridge was kind of already done, and um, now I just needed to I just needed to fill this episode to be completely honest. But I was thinking, what am I going to do on the coastline? Uh, am I going to just expand the city how I did it those uh, two three episodes back or something? You know, not even show it in the time lapse. Maybe just some kind of absolutely mundane expansion. I didn't really want it to do that. I wanted to do something a bit special, but at first I wasn't really sure. So I just created a couple of pillars that are holding uh, these um, these networks on on the shores. And uh, because I did not really want to have it all connected to the cable, especially not on the shores, because these networks are kind of close to the ground already. The cable is very, very tall at this point. So it would just look a bit bizarre. And uh, also these networks, as you can see, are diverging from the bridge. So there would have to be some kind of like a triangular, you know, shape holder from the cable. I would just look a bit weird. So some kind of pillars just holding that felt appropriate. But then it occurred to me, or I was just thinking, well, what am I going to build under those pillars? There's like a forest of pillars. Any kind of buildings are not going to fit there. It's going to be just very clunky and very awkward. So why not just turn that entire area under those diverging networks into just a huge, gigantic building, right? I already did something slightly similar in different parts of the city. Actually, I did something some, well, not really the same. I don't really want to say similar because it's just much smaller scale. Uh, those three episodes back, you know, with procedural objects, that custom building below the entrance to that terminus uh, tram station, the one with the reversible, uh, reversible track, right? But this one is going to be such, such much bigger and uh, much more important and kind of monumental, really. But anyway, let's let's talk in more specific terms here. So. What I started doing there, you can already see that in the time lapse while I'm just going to fill these blocks, I started creating this wall of concrete and it was immediately clear right from the start that uh, I'm just going to turn that into some kind of like a brutalism, uh, you know, architectural piece really and just experiment with that. So it was at this point, by the way, when I was doing this episode in Asturias or when I was building for it, I was, uh, I'm not really sure if that already aired or not. Um, so I don't want to give out any spoilers, but I was basically doing research on brutalism for Altengrad. And I was looking at various buildings, for example, the Barbican Center in London. And uh, I have to say that it kind of inspired me to do something like that in Asturias because all of those, you know, projects in that in Western Europe mostly are very futuristic looking and in Asturias I can just you know do whatever I want unlike Altengrad so so here we are basically it's kind of interesting how the two projects kind of intertwine in this regard but anyway uh, what was I saying right so uh, this entire thing under these uh, these networks is just going to be one huge building uh, I was just uh, trying to first uh, experiment with just walls of concrete in here and uh, it was clear that these particular pillars, by the way, these are th this, the, all of this concrete is just one object, yeah, that I'm just turning and changing and distorting with procedural objects. And that is one of the concrete railway pillars from the Railway 1 collection, right? So it's like a very old asset, but it's looking very nice. The, the concrete texture is looking really good. Uh, really fitting for this particular project. So that's why I'm using it. But by the way, what I'm trying to get to is that uh, when I started doing this, 
it became apparent and absolutely clear that this is going to be a huge project, right? And when I'm making this commentary, I already made the next episode of Us Tourists, or built for it at least. So I know that it turned into an absolutely huge project. So that's why I decided that we are going to split it into two episodes, right? So this one is mostly going to concentrating on the focusing on the bridge and the start of uh, this uh, huge structure below it and uh, some of the buildings that are going towards it that's what i was building there in the tram uh, station before and uh, in the next episode we are going to properly finish this uh, brutalist experiment right so definitely stay tuned for that because uh, it was probably one of the most complicated projects that i ever did in city skylines like especially with the scale and uh, just, you know, the aesthetics, because uh, I don't think I've ever done anything like that, just being inspired by real life in these kinds of, uh, in these kinds of uh, futuristic projects. I mean, I was, for example, with that beach tram, with the Belgium uh, tram as well, but uh, not really with these, like, architectural things, especially just put together completely, uh, you know, manually with procedural objects. So... So yeah, here we are. And, you know, as with all these kinds of brutalist, uh, brutalist buildings, they are highly divisive, I suppose, so a lot of, a lot of viewers will hate them. But, but anyway, yeah, so uh, this, is, uh, this is just some um, preparation for the future, I guess, F uh, future project, future build in the next episode, because at this point I was not exactly sure how far should I take it, so I was just trying to uh, wrap it up on this side, focusing mostly on these uh, building blocks that are leading into this area, this one, for example, we needed to somehow treat this uh, tram that is uh, coming from the from the coast because uh, it should not continue on the coastline because it needs to transfer to that future train station that is further inland, right? It would just not make sense if they were going parallel but kind of far away from each other, so the transfer would be uh, a bit awkward. So. You know, it, it's not exactly like the greatest because I wanted to have this tram line run on the coastline absolutely everywhere. But then again, this is kind of already like the end of this tram line, maybe a little bit. So it's perfectly fine. Uh, this little plaza in here is something that I already hinted at, indicated those three episodes back, I believe. And uh, this is just, you know, me finishing it. It's like a simple coastline plaza. It has these stairs going into that. Uh, main avenue that is slightly raised and uh, just a you know simple connections into it I'm doing these uh, pedestrian paths in this episode I decided to just show it fully how I do these or at least how I do the start how I'm painting them this is kind of the important step that I do nowadays and that is turning uh, all of these nodes that are close to stairs into nodeless with node controller and uh, also making that uh, that uh, I'm not really sure how it's called, uh, the alignment orientation distance, I'm turning it into zero. So that's exactly, f exactly flat between those nodes, right? And just like the stairs are. So the pedestrians that are going to use those stairs on the invisible paths are going to just use it uh, much, much cleanly. I believe that I showed that progress or process in that uh, uh, node controller tutorial that I did maybe almost a year ago or something like that. But anyway, this is the transition of the bridge. You can see those huge blocks of concrete now on the on both sides of the river, on the mountains, and the cable just uh, strung between them. Uh, I was not really sure how the cable is going to look over that circular building, but eventually it turned out looking okay. The cable is not really obstructing the view that much, and I eventually decided to kind of slim down the entire bridge structure. Uh, at first I was doing like a like a 45 degree uh, hanger hangers or cables from the main cable but i just decided to do them straight like this it's actually going to look like cleaner in the video as well and um, overall you know the structure it doesn't really look that big uh, and um, not really that massive just like the previous bridges so it's something different you know it it's kind of necessary to do something different every once in a while and speaking of something different I actually did not do lights this time and I don't really want to put like crazy lights on this bridge at at this point at least I'm not really sure if that changes in the future but uh, those previous bridges were kind of in the downtown the lights felt appropriate and I really do like them still on those previous ones but this one is kind of in the suburbs already lots of residential areas around it so you know it doesn't just make that much sense but we will see we will see maybe I'm just going to put some of those like uh, 
beams with procedural objects on it or something like that. But anyway, guys, uh, thank you for watching today's episode. Please do all the, all the algorithm things as usual with the video. And I will see you in the next one. All right. So take care and goodbye.